And now a message from our sponsor. Hey everybody, it's Bootleg Captain, Captain Bootlegs here. Yeah! If you're like me, I bet you're enjoying this Toys, Toys on Tap, Tap podcast. I am enjoying it, it's very nice. But did you know you can enjoy it more just by joining that Patreon? Oh, I did not know that. There are so many cool perks available on the Patreon for you. There's <laughs> and also <laughs> and and wow, that's really a lot of stuff if you ask Bootleg Captain. Captain I don't Bootleg. understand, there were noises I couldn't hear with the perks. So join today to support Toys on Tap podcast and Bootleg Art Toys. But if you're not in a position to join the Patreon, head on over to Apple iTunes and review and subscribe. That helps out the channel as well. Okay, I'll go rate it, I guess. And remember, listen to Toys, Toys on Tap. Tap. Captain Bootleg, the bootleg captain sent you. Why does he keep referring to himself in the third Can person? I stop with the stupid voice now? I'm not sure why you made me want to sound like a pirate. Oh, so that was a fake voice. Oh, yucko! I, I didn't realize it was just pretend voice. Oh. Hey man, how's it going? Good, good. It's good to see you back on Toys on Tap. Yeah, man. It's been a bl- it's bl- been a blast since last time. I mean, this is always fun talking with you. Yeah, and what's I can't wait because this is like not many people get a second episode, but you not only get a second episode, but yours involves what like twenty artists at this point. Yeah, we're up to twenty four. Holy hell! Actually, Holy I think hell. it was more than that at one point. A couple of the guys, um, they joined for like one or two rounds and then left. And then uh, we'll bar- it seems like every time we do a round, there's more people wanting to join. Yeah, which is so crazy. So before we dive in, please introduce yourself, all the normal stuff. Uh, my name's Dave. Uh, I run Dimension X Toys, but uh, this episode is more focused on another project I kind of started called Making a Mutant, which is basically a collaboration project with digital sculpting and kind of ties in with some of the toy people and like making toys from scratch kind of like indie toys Jeez, and it's so rad if you are listening you haven't taken a look it is so insane to see you guys like forming all these different pieces from all over it's incredible to watch oh yeah it's been a lot of fun um and the the one of the most cool parts about it being digital is we have people from all over the world so we have like People from Mexico City, Kentucky, New Orleans, Costa Mesa, Chile, Texas, Spain, France, Portugal, California, Spain, France, Sweden, Mexico City, Nashville, Argentina, Madrid, Ecuador, like just Holy all geez. over. And, and there's that's like the coolest part about it is since it's digital, we can all share files and and kind of work on projects together. Yeah. All right. So walk it back for me. You, what gave you the idea for making a mutant? Like what made you want to work with other artists and do that? So it was basically just seeing like lab monkey number nine, angry beast doing like the scraps or the apocalyptico yeah, or like these collaborative art projects. And I was like, well, I've kind of gotten into the digital thing. Is there a way I can kind of mimic this and create my own sort of collaboration and the idea was to just make like a classic Ninja Turtle style figure. You got seven body parts, head, right arm, left arm, torso, left leg, right leg, yeah. and weapons. And so, you know, can we build like these classic kind of Ninja Turtle figures? And I reached out to like maybe a handful of people in the beginning. I think there were seven of us that did the very first mutant and just kind of randomly selected who got what parts. And the goal was to just keep rotating so like each next round somebody would get like the arm if they got an arm they would get a leg next time or they get a head yeah or torso and they just keep we just keep swapping until you've come basically completed your own mutant from just like all these rounds of this project which is so crazy because uh from what i understand there's not really like a direction right like you just have the overarching because i have the first figure so the first project was just full random. Some of the guys, um, uh, Rebel 3D in Spain was like, well, we should do a theme. We should yeah. do like the elements. And so then I was, we, we kind of made, we kind of been just sort of creating rules as we go. Like, okay, so now each person in the group will kind of choose a theme each round. Okay. Kind of decide what it was. And so like, that was the second round was all elements. So like, there was like a stone here. I can even hold up the second figure. So like, you've got metal for the metal arm and he, oh, SMZ in rad. France. He did this metal like rocker arm, but he also did it in like a metal theme, like the uh, all the mechanics on the arm. Yeah. I did the head for this figure. I had nature. So I did like a deer head. 
Um, and then like, uh, to foot toys in Portugal, those are two guys. Um, they did this, uh, gargoyle alarm for the theme of stone. And then you've got like, I think this was crystals. Obviously this figure's not painted, so it doesn't really give its full aesthetic, yeah. but everything is really in our reveal is not really in color. We pretty much just have our sculpted pieces and we just reveal our sculpt. But yeah, like, like you said, you got to paint one of the first ones. Uh, I think bastards of the multiverse mailed you one, right? Yeah. And it was. What was cool about it is that figure, which I don't know if it has a name or anything, does it? Uh, Mutant subject number one. This is the first one I've painted of it. Oh, see, and it reminds me, you guys had Playmates Turtles in mind, and it reminds me of that immediately. Like holding it, the way it moves, the way that everything functions, the, like the craziness like uh, what always struck me about the turtles and like this figure is a fish is not going to have like on the if i remember the right leg is long nails standing on a board right yeah yeah so it's leg. like so like a, a fish is not going to have that but what struck me most about that is that that was the big thing of the turtles like the, every turtle or every like beast had something weird that you're like why does it have that but it looks so rad and so fun to paint. And that was another thing that we started thinking about as we got past the first and into the second round. We we're like, okay, what about if they were all compatible? What about if they all use the same articulation and we could right. rip them apart and you could swap out and you can. You could literally put this head on this body or this arm on this. And to be honest, I still have to give some credit to the TMNT customizer groups on Facebook because they yeah. would do a lot of different things with mostly just mashing up the original figures. But that was one idea I had was like, okay, could we make parts that could be interchanged with some of these other guys' customs that would fit these classic uh, pegs or ball joint legs? And the uh, all the articulation uh, Bastards of the Multiverse actually designed, he actually actually also does uh, he hips yep. for like E-Man figures. Well, he kind of he kind of makes all the Motu style like joints for replacing those old rubber bands that were in the Motu figures. Yeah. And so he's been a great asset. He's actually helped a lot with the articulation of he's he's good with ZBrush, which is kind of like the industry standard for 3D modeling type stuff. It's like the most professional software. A lot of the guys in the group use all different softwares, though. We have some guys that use like Nomad on the iPad. That's what I yeah. use. We got a handful of guys that use that. We got some guys that, that still use like Tinkercad on the computer, which is a free program. Yeah. Um or mesh mixer is another free one. Like a lot of the, some of the guys even still use some of these really basic programs and we really haven't tried to limit it in any way. We really have just been like, if somebody wants to join, we pretty much just let them and we've, we've expanded and we started doing more than one mutant. Every time we did a round, if we had too many people, we just made another mutant and we, or we made like a sidekick for the mutant. Oh um, my gosh. So what round are you on right now? So we had the first one, uh, mutant one, and then you had, uh, like this rocker style elemental, like vibe. Yeah, that going. was, that was the second round. And then the third round was, uh, two mutants. One was, and that theme was, uh, organic and mechanical. So we had like okay. almost like a robotic themed one and everybody that was in that group had to come up with something sort of mechanical or robotic, yeah. And the other group had to do something like all organic. So that one I think was like an ape head that SNZ toys did. Um, and then the fourth round after that was uh, most recent was the Kaiju uh, more mm. horrific. The group, he, he selected the Kaiju, like kind of like Japanese themed. Yeah. Kaiju and uh, Mecca. And so we had like two mutants again. And we also added in the extra sidekicks and the extra weapons that's been a common thing as well. If somebody asks, like, oh, hey, can I join in, like, last minute? We'll be like, oh, yeah, you can just do another accessory for the mutant, you know? Like, yeah. uh, Sir One Sir One joined in after the second round, in the second round, and he was like, he just made, like, a spike club with, like, skulls and, like, crystals on it. It was actually pretty awesome looking at him. That was just, like, a last minute ad that he did. And we've had a few times where we've already started in progress. Everybody's got their parts, and we try not to, like, show them. It's all kind mm. of, like, a secret. It's usually about a month out, and then we'll do like this big reveal where I'll, we'll take Bastards of the Multiverse, we'll articulate the figures, and then we'll take and uh, try to get them like ready and like, I don't know, like Nomad or some program where we can kind of turn them around a turntable or kind of display them in some kind of way to show off the pieces, show everybody's logos, try to give everybody some shout outs for their work. Yeah. And 
Yeah, it's growing. It's getting to the point where it's almost not manageable. <laughs> <laughs> That's the many mutants to, to have to like make a video for and, and fill everything in. So I remember you and I were talking about um at the at some point it would get to where you were trying to do like a hero team and a villain team, and each side would be like three characters. And I remember feeling like I'm not in this group, but I felt panic for you guys because it was like, that's like, like that means each side has like 40 pieces you need to design. And it was. Yeah. So <laughs> well, that was actually the third round with the organic mutant and the mechanical mutant. And they were like, well, who's the hero? and Who's the villain? I said, I don't know. I'd have to see what they look like first, because that's one yeah. of the things until you see what they turn out like. Who knows who's supposed to be that character? And I think we just determined neither one was a hero or a villain. They were just enemies of each other. Yeah. <laughs> what is cool about your this whole thing, uh, which I, I still want to dive in so much more. But what's cool about it is it has done two things for me. Um, immediately, it spurred on like, okay, like how do I invest in this to make this a product line? That's what I felt immediately. Like, how does how does Toys on Tap just throw you money so that this can be real? And then, yeah, yeah I was gonna say like we're not quite there, but I yeah. mean, Epoxy Crusader in the group has really made yeah. steps towards that. He kind of designed a logo. Um, he's reached out to some guys that he's actually had some of the first subject produced in a different style. It was more of like a three and three quarter style all yeah. solid no articulation but it was like basically he kind of recreated it and found a way to get injection molding made and a mold made affordably there in mexico city and he's bringing some to designer con so we will have some uh, me epoxy crusader and gorehounds from the group making a mutant will be at designer con this year that's so awesome i the thing that he when uh i'm glad you brought up epoxy crusader you know he you guys were in talks of like okay who wants to produce this or i don't know what was going on and i told him immediately because i was already painting and stuff and i was like hey listen if you want to like mexican bootleg vinyl toys are some of my favorites if you know a person like you just write a number on a piece of paper and send me that paper and we'll make this happen like i was so amped about it and it just was like well, I don't know. And it's not, I, I'm just waiting for like this whole production line to happen. Yeah, we're kind of just letting it evolve as we go. I mean, the group is uh, kind of always like, I mean, I wouldn't say we ever like fully disagree, but if I ever throw out there like, oh, what's the next theme going to be? It's just yeah. like utter chaos. And we have like, we have like a group chat with like close to 30 people in it on Instagram. Wow. And it just it just bounces all over the place and half the guys live on the other side of the world. So like, if I'm up at like five 30 in the morning, like I normally am, I, yeah. I can talk to some of these guys as they're getting ready for bed, you know, like, and so it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of strange, like having like certain things, there's only certain times of the day that you can really lay out important questions. If you want to get an answer from everybody within like a short amount of time, it can't be in the middle of our day or they're asleep, you know? So. Yeah. When you first, uh, I don't know what, if you or if whoever had like came up with this whole, man, this is what we want to do. How did you choose the artists that you wanted to work with when you first started? So when I first started, I really just, I'd already followed a good number of accounts. Of course, Epoxy Crusader, my good friend, like we've done a lot of projects together. So like I had him in mind immediately. He actually kind of taught me a lot of the stuff about Mesh Mixer and some of these other you know, rudimentary programs that are the, like the first programs that are available to you before you invest and pay for some sort of software. Yeah. He taught me about a lot about that type of stuff. So I was like, of course, I was going to include him. And Rebel 3D was in Spain. I'm going to read off some of these guys' names yeah. to give them, give them some shout outs. Rebel 3D was in Spain. He, I followed from Cults 3D, which is a website I would get a lot of the Ninja Turtle files from. So like there would be lots of 3d assets on this website that people yeah. sell or people make scans of vintage toys like desert octopus you and i have talked about before mm -hmm. but him he did i followed his stuff he does like a lot of motu themed weapons and add-ons and resin printable accessories all sorts of stuff like that and so i knew on the first round i wanted him to do the weapons yeah this before we decided we were going to make it all full random but i was like i really like the weapons this guy makes like he's he has a knack for it that's kind of like his theme most of the time mm -hmm. that and some accessories or different things like that so he was one of them uh bastards of the multiverse he was kind of a newer account um 
but I had followed him for a little bit and I really liked some of like the Motu mixed with Ninja Turtles that he had done. Uh, Gore Hounds was in Costa Mesa, California. He actually has a full toy line that he's done that's very similar to the Turtles already. Almost more of like a horror type theme though, mm. but he had very he did the body of the very first mutant, the uh sort of like the like the skull necklace and the oh uh, the, the spike thing in. Yeah, so he has a toy line that's very similar to this. Like he does like um I'm trying to think of all the different ones he's done, but his his work is amazing. Like his paint his paint work is amazing. Like he's got a full toy line pretty much already produced on his own. Yeah. So I reached out to him. Um Iguana Figures was a guy in Chile and he he I think done had worked mostly in Blender, but I seen he had done a lot of realistic face face recreations of different uh, people or things like that, all with digital sculpting. And I said, okay, yeah, this guy, there was just like a handful. I think it might've been like one or two that didn't respond or maybe said, no, I don't have the time for it. But pretty yeah. much everybody I asked said, yes, I, I think I asked maybe nine people and seven of the nine said, yes. Rad, rad. And more horrific is in Texas. Him and I collaborate collaborated on a Ninja Turtle project before that with like Crash Dummies and Ninja Turtles mixed together. Yeah, and he's he's like always sculpting. He's like always doing a hundred projects. I mean, he's he's never been one to be like, now nah, we need to slow down on this project and take <laughs> our time. Like, there's a couple of guys that do that. They have too much on their plate. They're like, yeah, we don't have time for this. But more horrific has always been like, oh no, come on, next one, next one, next one. And he's always working on a hundred digital things at a time. And then the second round, we added in SNZ Toys from France to Foot Toys from Portugal. Um, SNZ, they they also do like turtles and mashups of like Ghostbusters. I think he did like, I'm not sure if you've seen the the Krang as like the Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. So he did that and he's actually producing that. That was a brilliant figure. And he's also done lots of other turtle related things. So i once he, I asked him, I think for the second round, he said, yes, um, the foot toys, they do amazing work. Um, probably one of my favorite accounts on Instagram. They do like mostly turtles, like unmade Archie comic related type stuff. Yeah. Uh, Sir one collectibles joined after the second round. Um, and then I reached out maybe to a few more sick, sick a mill. Yeah. I oh yeah. Yeah. His name, but he makes amazing bootleg toys and he does the digital sculpting. So I was like, yep. I asked him he said, yes, he was into the idea. I forget the way he described the project though. Originally he was like, okay, it's, so it's like trading places or like the thing where you pass, yeah. pass around a piece of paper and y'all draw a different body part or something. And then <laughs> that's what he related it to. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of it. I said, just with digital sculpts of body parts or yeah. mutant parts. So. <laughs> We interrupted this broadcast of Toys on Top to bring you this. Meanwhile, in a galaxy of bootleg treasures. DOV2, we have engine failure. We almost crash land on DKE Toy Planet. Oh my, we're doomed. Wait, salvation. Hooray, we're saved, DOV2. Limited edition custom artist made action figures and DKE toys. Check out www.dkatoys.com for a full catalog. Hooray for custom action figures. DKE. Here's the question I have as you, because there is like standard things that probably have to be dealt with, right? So if the figure, it's uh, probably what, four and a half inches, the mutant one. Yes, yeah, so we have a template. In okay, fact, the very okay. first, this very first mutant, the template was the punker Donatello from the from the vintage line. You know, like right. the Mohawk Donatello. Anyway, yeah. this boot is pretty much exactly the same. Um, Iguana figures definitely added some details, but he kept that pose of the original boot on the punk rocker Donatello. Yeah, looks great. And so that was our template. We just had a 3D model for the Punker Donatello, and that was like the first one that we just kind of based everything by. And then Bastards of the Multiverse figured out all the articulation and made some templates. And now he's got it all set up in ZBrush where he can literally just push a button. And we we have a, a template that we made for this one follows closer to like the general Trag body from Ninja Turtles. Yep. How it's kind of like a bulkier with like almost like a front hanging head. Yeah. Rather than on top, it's kind of hanging off the front and it's a bulkier body. And this is kind of our generic body type now. Um, and he has a like a key made up in ZBrush where he can just push a button 
And once we have all our parts just kind of laid there, it'll automatically slice them and put all of our articulation. And he has like these special joints that he actually designed that, that work similar to like a Ninja Turtle peg joint, but because resin is brittle, yeah, it requires like, it actually twists on. You probably saw it, how it has like a slot and it, yeah, you're going on, and you're going on a spear. And so it twists on, but then it keeps on there and you could actually use something that you would normally have to have a softer material to pop over that hard socket. But that's like his uh, patented uh, <laughs> so articulation. And in, in working with this many artists, um, and you, it, it's tough, right? So once you have created your portion of one of the mutants, are you allowed to kind of do and print and sell and do whatever you want with that toy? Yes. Yeah, so this is what we've kind of agreed upon. Some of the guys said this isn't my scale of figures. I would never produce this or okay. anything like that. Kind of the rule we've given out is if you participate in a round, you can sell and produce that figure if you so choose. Great. You can you can you can try and make your own profit off it, whatever. But it, only if you participated in that round. So like some of the guys that just recently came in were like, "Oh, can I have the old files?" It's like, "No, you can't." Like these belong to these artists. Yeah. That were part of this collaboration. Like it doesn't backdate unless you were part of that specific group. Like you don't get to have access or make these things or sell them. So. Right. But if you're part of like they got some of the original guys that have been with it the whole time. They have access to all of them because they've been in it for every round up to. I think Epoxy Crusader set out for one round, so he has one figure he doesn't really have. But most everybody can print and sell any of these, and you know it's hard enough to make a buck. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I what what is so crazy too about this is like you guys are self regulating. You're a toy company that's kind of like this bootleg esque toy company, and you're self regulating on themes and characters and who can have what. And it's it's crazy to see, but you're functioning like a company. It, it's it's yeah, it's sort of like a little democracy. <laughs> like you yeah. kind of just let everybody kind of vote on everything. I mean, I I essentially kind of have the say at the end of the day, but for the most part, I try not to step on anybody's toes and I try to hear everybody out and we try to come to a consensus what the best way forward is. But yeah, we've had a few times with discrepancies and people getting upset Yeah, or, <laughs> and we have to figure out a way to like, you know, smooth it out and keep everybody happy. But so the here is the, the, so I said there was two things uh, earlier that made me, and this is number two that made me like really trip with these. One of my dreams uh, when I first got into bootlegging that just never happened and probably will never happen with me is uh, the idea that you can create like you go to all these different artists, they create a leg or an arm or whatever. And then at a show, someone pays forty dollars and they get five or six quarters and it's like a quarter machine and you just kind of get what you get and you build your figure. You guys have done it. You guys, once all these characters are done, it becomes a thing of like, you can mix and match. You can do whatever you want. That, that was kind of an idea. Also, I had was to just make like some sort of website, have all the different body parts from all the mutants. And you can yeah. basically build your own figure. We'll have all the different pieces in stock. You ship it out, whatever one they, whatever body parts they want, you ship them out. And then, I don't know, if we could ever organize it right, you'd have some sort of system set up where each artist would get paid whatever portion if their body part sold or yeah. whatever. You know, like you'd get like a royalty or something. I, I don't know how it would work, but but yeah, <laughs> it's interesting because I mean, right now it really hasn't made us any money or anything per se. I mean, yeah, most of us are just doing this for fun, and that's kind of in the attitude is like this is just for fun, let's just find a way to collaborate. And it was really projects like Apocalyptico or or you know stuff like the Angry Beast and Lab Monkey Number Nine have done. That's like, man, this stuff is really exciting to see people kind of come together and do something. But this specifically is more so just one figure that a group of people is doing. So yeah, and I it is just I gotta say from the outside because I remember you and I had talked and we wanted to get a bunch of the different artists on. I could tell you just like very candidly right now i knew it was going to be such a struggle because like working with artists in europe it's like i gotta be yeah, up at 4 a.m yeah 
But I, 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 I felt that from you, and I was like, okay. I was like, I don't know if like the group episode. I don't know if twenty four people are going to be able to come yeah. on. Here. <laughs> you would have had me time left for your own life. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was cool. Like I do eventually want all of them on, and maybe I'll split it up by country or by body part or however I'm going to do it. But it that, has... that could probably work if you did like maybe like a group episode with the guys in Europe or yeah, and you know we got. Um, also, uh, Ember Twist in Sweden. Okay. He did, he did the uh, head for the kaiju. It was almost like a Godzilla looking head. And he also did, I'm trying to think of what he did on the body. I think he did a body before that, I'm like, like a mechanical mech body that was yeah. really awesome, too. Um, and he does like really realistic, like Ninja Turtle, um, almost like statues. He, mm-hmm. and he was like, he was like wondering, like, oh, what about the articulation? I don't know how to do any of that. I said, don't worry about it. We got a guy in the group that kind of knows how to do all that. And yeah. you just, that's pretty much what I tell everybody. Like, just kind of follow the template. If it doesn't, we'll we'll kind of figure it out at the end. If we got to figure out how to make this arm fit in this spot or whatever, you know? So it's just sort of, and you you still have room as digital sculptors to sort of kind of auto-correct something if it doesn't really work, you know? Like, yeah. And he said to do that a couple of times, like if the, if the torso was a little bit too wide or too narrow and he had to, and it didn't look right, you know, we can adjust proportions at the end. Yeah. So here's the, somewhat fit. I, which is crazy too. Cause you're, you're dabbling in, you're dabbling in some like gnarly stuff and it's, you guys are handling it like champs, which is amazing. If someone designs a piece and you guys work together and you're like no no we'll adjust the proportions and get it together you're changing like technically changing some of their art and everyone in this group is like okay do what you need to do to make it fit well we have had we have had one time <laughs> where it didn't really work out so great but um we we resolved it um basically yeah that's kind of what happened like there were some modifications that had to be made to make the pieces work together yeah and one of the guys was upset and i was like okay well you know like we'll we need to have better communication. And I think he did mention them in the group chat and this and that, but he didn't see the message of yeah. him asking when he went to do the articulation about it. And it caused like a big fuss. And <laughs> But I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like we all understand that the common goal is to create something cool and, and you kind of let it go after a while, even if there is like discrepancies about the way you want something. Like we try right. to part of appease everybody and, come up with something unique and creative and because you guys are in this like beginning stages of this even though you've done so many rounds already like you guys have set yourselves up for success in the long run if you like even if this breaks out of the we just want to have fun and you're just like no let's do a mad dash let's sell these things you guys have set yourselves up for so much success yeah, and I think that's really the way it needs to be kept. If it's ever going to be successful, is it can't turn into a job. The minute it does, yeah. I feel like a lot of the guys will start to hate the project. And I think a lot of us, in fact, sometimes if you get a say you get a body part that you've already sort of already done, like maybe it was already a leg, you got the left leg the time before, and you got the right leg this time, and you start to get bored. I think it's important to try and make sure that everybody gets something unique or different to do on each project because if it's not fun or exciting for the guys like creativity starts to die and right. the project doesn't turn out as great yeah so here's the question if people see and they're like lurking on your instagram and the making a mutant instagram how do they get these figures who would they go to to get their hands on these figures so as of right now, some of the guys do resin printing and okay. 3D printing like myself, but some of the guys don't. Um, so, I mean, you could literally reach out to whoever's geographically closest to you would probably be the smartest for shipping and everything like that. Like if yeah. you're in Europe, you might want to reach out to one of the guys in Europe to 3D print you a piece of it. But I mean, at this point, we haven't really been profit driven. A lot of the times we'll just do it at cost and print one for somebody if they want to paint one as long as they tag everybody. And that's kind of been an important rule as well. Anytime you do anything with these mutants, you need to like give credit to the original artists. Make sure you tag all seven yeah. people that were part of that mutant or whatever. And make sure that whoever's work is being presented that it, they're still getting the credit for it. Because right now this has not really been about profit. It's been more so just about fun and coming up with something creative and new. And so that that's really 
if they want to get something, I would just reach out to the person closest to you and make sure they do printing because not all the guys do. Um, there's a few guys that, you know, might have a printer, but they rarely use it. And mm-hmm. there's some guys that print all the time. So you just kind of reach out to whoever. I and mean, you can yeah. reach out to me. I can tell you who's closest to you that does 3D print. Uh, I Bastards uses um... – the resin right yeah he's not he's the resin 3d printer correct well we all well i have resin printers as well but i think whatever i sent you for your for your project was pla because i was just sort of more so prototyping but we could do it in resin if you needed in resin um but i wanted to make sure that it worked (laughs) yeah it, it did it worked it worked perfectly i absolutely love it um i actually that one had to go on the back burner and I haven't been able to do it because I've been doing other toy stuff and life got busy. But yeah, it was – I asked that because it's like you do the giant ones because I, I – those, those are filament. Anything giant like I could show you actually right now. This is some – they actually have the first mutant that we that we did in giant size. Here's here's my here's my my crude setup. It's basically just a piece of plywood with a uh, dowel hanging above it. I hang all my pieces or I put them on a screw to uh, suspend them while I do the glaze. Oh, it looks so good. This is actually uh, for Epoxy Crusader. <laughs> nice. That's so good. So how big is that? Uh, is the first mutant going to stand? Uh, I would say about the same size as those giant turtles from the 90s. That's kind of my scale. Um, like 18 inches? Giants. I think it's like uh, here, 15 or 18. Probably, probably about 13, 14. I don't know. I'll show you the... I got like the giant basketball Donatello right here from the nineties. Oh, like one of these. So good. That's kind of all the scale I make. All the giant figures has always yeah. been kind of like the size of the giant ones from the nineties. Yeah, the giant turtles. Holy crap! So here is, um, I mean, I want to get back. Like that's, I love hearing all about this. But now we got to catch up with you. You haven't been on the podcast for a while. Like, how is all this large scale 3D printing going? What are you working on currently, other than making a mutant? You're going to be at Designer Con. So much stuff. Yeah, in fact, that's start starting to starting to starting to get close. So I yeah. really tried a lot of stuff uh, made up for for that. At least I was thinking about bringing that that giant version of that mutant. Maybe we'll raffle it off at the thing. Oh. Yeah. Or something. Maybe maybe it'll be a giveaway or something, and we'll have to be present to win or something. I'm not sure. Um, but also, I have uh, a few different random figures I've made, like that um, that psycho rabbit, mm-hmm. psycho bunny. It was like a to- unmade Toxic Crusader made by David Arshowski. He did the concept artwork, and anyways, I sculpted that just from some images. And this uh, color scheme was actually made by more horrific. Uh, he, he's in our group and some of the guys do digital coloring like in some of these digital programs so like he did like a full digital uh color scheme yeah wow. and i kind of fit along with that and i <laughs> thought like he did a good job selecting colors that contrast well yeah oh yeah the the green and the purple is such a good blend yeah so good I mean, I have that. I think I did like an alien. I don't know. I don't think I have that one handy where I can show it to you, but I did like an alien. It was also just another piece of artwork I found online. I actually reached out to the artist of the artwork and said, Hey, you know, would you be cool? You know, you, you could, I could go 50, 50, you do the artwork and the card back and I'll do the figure Mm. type of thing. Um, and I found out he was in the UK. I had to do like a reverse Google image search for this alien image I was using to sculpt. And I, on the original guy posted it on some reddit forum or something and then i was able to find the original guy awesome but i like doing stuff like that i mean i'm kind of random if like i see something that excites me i'll drop everything and start you know the ten thousand project rather than yeah yeah and finish the obvious thing that's in front of me that i need to finish yeah and you don't take on any small projects i mean you and i talked about like my dream of having that massive like rancor and you were like okay it's gonna print for like so long it's gonna take forever yeah it was like when i calculated the size you wanted and that wasn't even as big as you said you might want it it was gonna be (laughs) six or seven days of continuous printing yeah and that's a lot of printing (laughs) (laughs) i just uh, yeah i at some point like it's getting scary because like 
I've never seen myself in a, as a collector, and now I'm starting to like dive into that. But what is so interesting is the stuff like the Make a Mutant project with every artist and like large scale. That stuff starting to interest me, and that's all so expensive. And my I just have already braced my wife for like, hey, there might be some bills that come in that are really high. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess the the hope is that this will go somewhere where it will at least like provide some income. You know, like right now, I mean, I think it's very hard to do anything with toys. I mean, to yeah. to make, I mean, I think you got to be one of the top guys in it or one of the oldest ones in it, like Suck Lord or one of these guys to kind of use it as your daily. Because I do like commercial HVAC for a living. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> roofs in like Louisiana in the intense heat. So <laughs> when I come home, sometimes I don't always feel like working on any of this stuff. I just feel tired and. <laughs> over over exerted <laughs> yeah so here's the has i mean what does it look like to reach out to i don't know like uh nacelle and stuff because they like just to get the word out and so more people understand that these are all original characters being developed yeah and i think if we had something to go along with it like maybe like some some sort of like traits or some sort of like yeah characteristics or a storyline or something that could go with it i think that one of the one of the original ideas we came up with was maybe lightning strikes like all these different countries right for like a cosmic lightning storm and then all these mutants start forming like so it's sort of so good semi uh literal of what it actually is <laughs> yeah <laughs> i oh my gosh yeah I, it's been a cool project to see um and then you just posted this like dope tv thing that your phone goes in uh, so so i actually had already posted this but um anyways i don't want to bore everybody with life stuff but i had uh my cat had an incredible amount of vet bills like mm -hmm. close to twenty five hundred dollars worth we just came back from vacation so we're already you know kind of tight on budget you know yeah. and I'm home and my cat on the way back home got food poisoning i fed him some pumpkin with his food that was like you know um refrigerated but and it turns out it was bad mm -hmm. i thought it was fine because it had been kept in the refrigerator but apparently it was bad and he got food poisoning and it was like in and out of the vet for a full week so basically i'm just trying to pay off vet bills and yeah. going through and looking i was like okay what's any recent toys i picked up that i could just put on ebay you know i sold the most recent secret of the used turtles i just found at walmart i put those on ebay i was looking through like so i do these basketballs right like for that 90s donatello uh, I make yeah production of this basketball is really hard to find and so i had my buddy scan it i do 3d prints of that for collectors if they're trying to get one i sell it for pretty cheap like 25 bucks rather than uh to shoot this figure complete in in the box goes on ebay you can't find one for less than 6800 dollars. so holy hell <laughs> Just doing it as a service for collectors if they just want to have something to display their figure with because it's a hard piece to find. Yeah. But I was just I was just scraping everything. Trying that's why I started glazing all these figures too. I was like, I gotta get on it. Uh I got a lot of giant ninja turtles still that I have still never finished. So I was like, I'm gonna start glazing all of them. I've got my friend Dave in Canada. We're gonna probably do a uh, raffle soon with some of the giant ninja turtles to try and also generate some funds to pay for those vet bills. Yeah. I've also number of friends and fans reach out and offer um money support for the bills which has been awesome so i mean it's been pretty cool like having that kind of support system from both the turtle community and the toy community so yeah which is rad i'm so like it's such a bummer when those things hit but to have something like that around you that's insane and i, I normally wouldn't reach out but i mean i was like okay i'm kind of at a <laughs> situation where i'm gonna go further and further into credit card debt if i don't pay off this vet bill so right <laughs> i was just like what are my options you know can i can i post about this can i you know can i start selling some more of my stuff to try and make this money up because a lot of the stuff i just have sitting around and I got asked to be part of this Ninja Turtle documentary so I didn't want to sell a lot of my giants because I wanted to have them for this documentary right but now it's like I'm kind of at a point where I might have to sell some of them to pay off these bills. So it's yeah. not like a crossroads. <laughs> is there – is it – so it's the – is it the new – I just found a guy that's doing this turtle documentary. He's like interviewing people 
it's an independent documentary, correct? Yeah, yeah. On N- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Picks is his account on yep. Instagram. He's kind of like a big Leonardo collector, and I uh, he I only saw like the beginning of the little intro clip he sent me, and it was like Pixel Dan, mm-hmm. uh, 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 Chris Fawcett from Rad Plastic is in it, and he was in it. I'm trying to think who else was in the little intro clip he showed me, but he said he's going to try to come to New Orleans to do the filming for that. And I'm just like, man, I was like, I really need to get us kind of like my collection kind of set up because most of it's just either in tubs or boxes or not really displayed. I live in such a tiny house in New Orleans. I don't really have the space to be like a full on collector with my stuff displayed, you know? Yeah. Man. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, God, I can't wait to see you in it. Cause like not many people like that I've found do what you do. Correct. Like you're doing large scale and. Oh, so there really wasn't, I think I was if not the first one of the first that ever did the giant Ninja Turtles 3D printed, like the foot soldier that I know of, I've never seen another one that was made before it. That was the first one I did. I did the scratch the cat, which was like the rare one. I did like a giant one of that. And everybody would reach out to me and was like, Oh, you know, can you make me one? Can you make me one? I'd be like, no, I don't have the time. Like they take, they take like close to like a week to two weeks to print, depending on what infill settings you're using with the filament. Um, Yeah. 3D printing is not a fast process. I mean, resin is almost faster than the resin printing is almost faster than filament, depending on, but you got bigger size. So I guess you got to wait, but yeah, like just a torso for like that making a mutant was like an over like a 24 hour, 36 hour print, you know, like or the so head big. might be, the head might even just the head might be 18 hours or 24 hours, you know, and you got support material. If you got things that hang out, you got to have support underneath it. So the printer is going to add support as it goes. And so it's not really a fast process. That's why I kind of wanted to do like mold making if you, but that'd be a lot of silicone, you know, like for these giant yeah. things, make copies. And then you got to, then resin's also not cheap. So <laughs> and not yeah. only that, the figure be heaven. PLA is very light. Like these like PLA prints that I have, yeah but it's actually it's got like a honeycomb fill infill like 20 percent, and this glaze really helps lock it together but the glaze really covers all the all the the print layer lines really nicely so good like a two-part like a barcode epoxy pretty much is what i use like you get it at low 70 bucks mix it together and just brush it on and it kind of self levels and covers all the print lines will you be um that that print right there are you gonna paint it or is it just going bootleg style oh i usually always paint them because there might even be a few spots like you saw on the fish where i had to take a little bit of epoxy sculpt and like mm. fix, fix something or whatever the, the the gill on the side or the or the little yeah. fin on the side i have to make a little make a little repair so ideally i usually still always print them but if the print was flawless you could just go bootleg style i suppose but i'm probably going to do some sort of paint scheme and i usually sand it up and prime it paint it with acrylic paint i love it i love the large scale stuff i have been as we've been talking thinking of like i need to reach back out to either you or bastards and like see if i can get a a print of each one and just to have myself unpainted reach out bastards has got his machines dialed in i'm actually hesitant to even run my resin printers right now because the fumes are so bad Um, yeah and i've i've kind of researched how to run a little ventilation system to run it out but it's like i don't know my girlfriend will like wake up with like a headache because of like the machines running overnight you know so it's like yeah i like doing it unless it's like absolutely necessary and once i have ventilation set up it'd probably be a lot better but there's there's there are certain resins that smell and give off less odor odor than others there's water-based resins but they're a little bit more brittle when they come out the print yeah well hey it has been so good to have you come on and talk about this project i've been dreaming about this one for a while since it started and I'm glad that we made it work. Yeah, man. I'm glad I was able to come on and talk about it because, yeah, it's been kind of exciting. The Instagram is growing slowly. Like we've got, I mean, it's, and I notice anytime I post this stuff, making a mutant, like the algorithm just like hates it. It's like, no, mm-hmm. only Ninja Turtles can be posted on your page. It's like, yeah, <laughs> like literally I'll have like, I'll have like a thousand views on like, I'm like a Mondo Gecko, giant Mondo Gecko on my page. And then like the second I 
post or like a thousand likes, the second I post like um, a making a mutant thing, I might get like 50 or 60 because my niche on Instagram is all Ninja Turtles. That's what I built my whole page on. It's just Ninja Turtles. So the second I do something that's completely out of the out of the algorithm, like it just like dies. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm considering not even posting it through my Dimension X toys anymore and just posting solely. You know how you can do the collaborative posts where you. Yeah. Which, I mean, it helps the show. Some people dig it, but I mean, I think most of the people that like my stuff just want giant Ninja Turtles. So, I mean, those reels, I mean, I guess technically are the best way to grow your account, but not everybody likes videos. I mean, especially in the toy world, I feel like images sometimes do a better job of showing like your figure, you know, than, than a video does. But Instagram's like completely diverted their algorithm to just reels. And if you don't do reels, your account just sort of stays stagnant and dies. Yeah. Well, hey, just like every other episode, I need you to plug everything for me before we get you out. Yeah, of here. let me let me just shout out these other guys I didn't mention yet. Um Arthur Green in France, he he joined in on like the third round. Ember Twist in Sweden, Mr. Mento, um, GD Originals, Headhunters Customs, Dylan Wheelock, which Dylan, I believe, also works for Four Horsemen uh studios. They do mm. like the you know, like the, uh, I'm trying to think what the toy line is that they're known for the, I can't even think of the name of it. Poison, another guy, Mexico City, Riclo Toys from Mexico City, Baga Bozeta from Ecuador, Fan Guy from Nashville, Tennessee, Altres, I don't know how you say this name, Altres de Aficionado, Argentina, and Roltron from Spain. Um, Sorry, I've had butchered your guys' names. I just want to make sure I shared your thing. And so the next round is what I wanted to talk about. Also, I verified with Lab Monkey number nine it was okay to share this information because I don't know if this show has really been revealed yet. And yeah. he said, however, this goes in, in a week. If you want to release this episode, that's fine. He said, but the the actual show isn't coming out till I think the 13th of October. So it's this is from his message. F is for Frankenstein online art show. It's October 13th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so basically it's a Frankenstein themed art show. Yeah. And making a mutant is being part of it. And there's a few of our guys that are also doing solo pieces for it, like Bastards, awesome. Multiverse, Sycamill. Um I'm not sure if there any of the other guys are, but I think a few of them are also doing their own personal one, but making a mutant is doing two mutants for this project. And yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. I think uh, we got asked to be part of it. And like I said, that was the original inspiration for making a mutant anyways, was like these type of collaboration art show type things online. So that's one of the main things I wanted to make sure I share. Um, other than that, I mean, we're generally always adding people where we do rounds pretty much monthly every once in a while everybody's like let's take a break for like a week or two and then we'll go back and we'll set a new target date of a month out and we'll choose a theme and we'll all sculpt random body parts and put them all together at the end that is so rad thank you so much for talking about it and one day we'll get all the other artists on at some point that sounds good man thanks for having me on Toys on Tap. Toys on tap. The next episode. The next episode. It's great. It's amazing. You're going to want to listen to it. It's not right now, though. You're going to have to wait till the next episode to listen to it. Oh, when's that? The next one. Cool. Toys on Tap. Toys on tap. The next one's going to be good, too. So stay tuned and, and, and listen to that. Toys on Tap. Awesome.